Mr. President, uh, I spoke to so many of my colleagues, I know I have with my good friend, one of the most distinguished members of this body, the Senator from Montana, and others about what's happened in Vermont. We're a little state. We're 660,000 people. We're a state that has sent volunteers all over the country when people have been hit by earthquakes and tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding. Uh, but now Vermont has been hit. The response was me thanked him and said, you helped us. We'll help you. Mr. President, you, uh, you know rural America. And you know we pitch in to try to help each other. But unfortunately, this is the tip of the iceberg. Roads, bridges and rail lines, all over the state have been wiped out. I apologize to my colleagues for being emotional, but this is my state. This is my home. It's the home of my ancestors. And we've seen flooding close more than 300 town and state roads. They've damaged more than 20 bridges in Vermont. They stranded people in more than a dozen towns for days. Damages to the state's federal aid roads and bridges will exceed half a billion dollars in our little state. It's going to take years and years to recover. It's been extremely difficult to move emergency supplies and we're building materials around. And some of the washed out roads have gaping gullies in the middle that are 30 feet or more deep. You can't just drive a truck over that. And some of the reopened roads and bridges aren't even recommended for heavy traffic. And the consequences have been harsh. Residents are forced to make a 30 mile plus detour to the nearest grocery store or doctor. On mountain roads, many of them dirt roads. Businesses are struggling to reopen, rehire their people, but then to find new customers. Schools have been forced to remain closed to repairs are made. And children are wondering, adding to the trauma of what they've seen, they're wondering, when are we going back to the normalcy of going to school? And given the breadth and depth of Irene's destruction on top of the ongoing disasters already declared in all 50 states, we have to ensure that FEMA and the Department of Transportation have all the resources they need to help our citizens in their desperate time of need. The other night, the president addressed the Congress and the nation from the, from the floor of the House of Representatives on his way in. He leaned over and said to me, I'm, I'm thinking of your people in Vermont. And that means a lot. And, and I do applaud him for issuing the emergency declaration very, very quickly. And then when we needed to make an adjustment to it, doing that. But we have to replenish the FEMA Disaster Relief Fund and the Federal Highway Emergency Road Fund, both of which are at dangerously low levels right now, not just for Vermont, but for every other state. Every other state that have been hit with the same kind of problems. Without supplemental funding to these and the other emergency accounts, Vermont and all the other 49 states with ongoing federal disasters are not going to have the resources to rebuild. Mr. President, Americans should be worried about Americans. The kind of money we're talking about we throw away in Iraq and Afghanistan in a week's time. And we do it on a credit card. And we say we don't have to pay for it. And now we have some say, well, but if we're going to help Americans, we better find out some way we can pay for it. Thousands of American families and businesses have been devastated by an unprecedented series of floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, wildfires. Look at the pictures out of Texas and other natural disasters these years. The people hurting out there, they're not thinking about Democrats versus Republicans or Republicans versus Democrats or red states versus blue states. They're saying we're Americans. We help everybody else. Can we at least help ourselves? In my 37 years in the United States Senate, we've always dealt with disaster bills together. We haven't cared whether it's a Republican state or a Democratic state, whether it's a Republican president or a Democratic president, We've worked across the aisle in the spirit of bipartisanship in the best interests of America, in the best tradition of our country. It's unconscionable that a small number decided to inject politics and political point scoring into a situation that's already so difficult and so laden. 
the grim realities for so many of our fellow citizens. Go and talk to a farmer who's seen his herd decimated and tell them that. Go and see a small business owner that's a major employer in a small town and who's saying, I don't know how I can keep hiring these people. Go and tell a child who's asked their parents, when will the road be done so that we can go to school or visit grandma? Tell them, tell them.